Hi, my name is Mike and today we're going to talk about pre-intubation airway assessments. For the purpose of this video, we're going to assume that we're intubating a critically ill patient in an ICU, emergency room, or maybe a STAT team type of situation. Now this assessment should be done prior to every intubation. The only possible exception would be during a crash airway scenario, such as during a cardiac arrest, but even then, as long as you're able to oxygenate and ventilate the patient with another method, such as a bag valve mask, a quick abbreviated airway assessment should still be done. Now the purpose of an airway assessment is so that we can uncover any predictors of a difficult airway and formulate a plan to safely manage each individual airway situation. Now please check out our video on formulating a good intubation plan, but for now, we're going to dig into the difficult airway predictors. The memory aid for difficult intubation or laryngoscopy predictors is LEMON. L stands for look. Use your gestalt and look at the patient. Do they look like they are going to be a difficult intubation? E stands for evaluate 332. That's three fingers in the mouth, three finger breasts under the chin, and two finger breasts of thyromental distance. Less than these distances and the patient likely has an anterior airway. M is for malampati. Look in the mouth. If you're able to see the uvula, that is a good thing. If you can only see the hard palate, that is a bad thing. O is for obstruction. The most common upper airway obstruction in adults is the tongue, but the patient could also obstruct their airway with blood, emesis, or a foreign body. N is for neck mobility. Patients in a C collar or who have rheumatoid arthritis will be particularly difficult. Moving on to difficult BVM predictors, we use the memory aid Roman. Radiation to the head and neck causes anatomical abnormalities and narrowing of the airway. Obesity, OSA, and obstruction leads to crowded oropharynx that will result in difficult airflow. Difficulties in getting a mask seal, especially in males with a beard, can cause ineffective bag valve mask ventilation. Advanced age causes difficulty with getting a mask seal and if the patient has no teeth, this will make it difficult to prevent a mask leak. For time purposes, I will speed through rods and smart. For the difficult LMA, or extraglottic device, difficulty placing the device is predicted with indicators of a crowded pharynx or abnormal anatomy, while difficulty achieving ventilation occurs if the patient has restrictive lung disease. Difficult surgical airway can be predicted when there are anatomic changes in the neck region that would obscure identifiable landmarks or cause narrowing of the airway preventing an ET tube or a crike tube from passing. For more detailed information on these predictors, please visit pumpcast.com or visit the Difficult Airway Course website. Now that we've reviewed the mnemonics for difficult airway predictors, let's see what it looks like in real time. If time permits, before entering the room, I do a chart review looking for any history of difficult intubations, look at the chest x-ray, review the lab abnormalities, and see if I find any history of head and neck cancer, radiation, etc. Once at the bedside, I do a quick visual inspection, usually starting with the malampati score if the patient can participate. I also look in the mouth looking at the tongue. Uh, I look for false teeth, maybe any evidence of bleeding in the airway. I also see if the patient has a beard or facial abnormalities. Um, I check a 332, all right, looking for anterior airways. I also palpate the neck structures here, looking for hematomas, masses, and finding my landmarks. I check neck flexion and range of motion. I also think about risk factors for aspiration at this time, usually asking my team members, the nurse and the RT, if they have any reasons to suspect the patient may have aspiration during the intubation. I also think of physiologic difficult airway predictors like hypoxia, hypotension, and acidosis. At this time, now that I've completed an airway assessment, I feel like I can safely navigate this patient's airway management and intubation and timely respond to any difficulties that may arise. In closing, I would like to share a quote from one of my airway mentors and that is, the difficult airway should be predicted so that the failed airway is not experienced. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Michael Burton, and thank you for everything that you do to make a difference in your patients' lives.